young men, and uh, he should have been in prison for it. If if they yeah. had done, if they had done anything like what he was accusing them of, they'd have gone to prison. So, oh, absolutely. But, well, but this ain't America really no good. more, Elaine. This is the homeland now. Hang tight. We'll be right back, everybody, with All Elaine right. Castle after this. Okay. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. All right, boys and girls, going back to the radio show. It's Anti War Radio. I'm Scott Horton. This is where I pose everything and I bring on the expert guests to. Make sure I understand those things right so I can oppose them correctly. Now, I'm talking with Elaine Castle. She's the author of The War on Civil Liberties, and she knows of what she speaks. She's a civil liberties attorney in Virginia and a longtime expert guest on this show. And now, Elaine, I'm looking at a New York Times article, but it's by Charlie Savage and James Rison. So hold your horses. Don't just dismiss it out of hand. Mm-hmm. It's got Savage's name on it. I like that. All oh, right, so I like Savage. I like Savage, right? Yeah, yeah. No, he really is great. And and Ryson has done some uh, great work as Ryson, well. Excellent, right? Um, okay, so um, we won't hold the uh, you know the uh, fact that they have the same uh, banner as uh, David Sanger and Michael Gordon against them. Right. Uh, okay, so uh, here we have federal judge finds NSA wiretaps were illegal. This is from March. My friend mm-hmm. Zira in the chat room sent this to me, and this is from. Uh, let's see, March 31st, 2010, a federal judge ruled Wednesday that the National Security Agency's program of surveillance without warrants was illegal, rejecting the Obama administration's effort to keep shrouded in secrecy one of the most disputed counterterrorism policies of, uh, yeah, counter us policies of George Bush. 45 page opinion uh, said that they had violated uh, FISA when it came to the case of the Al Haramain Foundation. Uh, But this was not the Supreme Court case. Uh, This was just uh, a federal judge. I'm certain that uh, if I kept reading this thing, it would say the Obama administration appealed it. Is there any progress on this case? And can you fill us in on uh, how it could be that a judge would ever say that the executive branch can't do whatever it wants? Well, because um, the judge read the law and the evidence and decided that the case could go forward. And so, of course, I'm assuming, I mean, I'm sure by now, if it was going to be appealed, it would be appealed by now. But, however, you're probably going to get the same problem, and they're going to get to the state secrets issue, because you'll be asking them to disclose how and why they did what they did. So I think that that's going to end up on the same road that you and I just talked about. Um, I think the, the – so I don't think the answer is, is, is in the courts. And the, I mean, the courts may go as far as they go, but – it, it, just like you just said, you know, this is what happens. And if it doesn't happen in the even if even if in the district court, the court says this case could go forward against people who have been aggrieved. Uh, and, of course, you have to find people who actually know they have been aggrieved, by the way, Scott. You can't just file a blanket suit and say, you know, but that has been tried and people have lost. You realize that people have already, you know, found gone through the issue of their surveillance, the you know, lawyers, the Guantanamo and all this. And when it's gotten to the uh, gotten to the appellate court, the appellate court has kicked it back and said we can't take this case because of state secrets. So sure, I mean it, it, it's nice to know that a judge has validated what people have been telling us for years, but it doesn't mean there's going to be any relief in the court system. And I always go back to this: the answer is not in the court system. Even if even if you win a case, I mean, absent an injunction, let's say a court said to the to the president, "You've got to stop this," right? Because it's illegal. Well, then that gets us back to the very thing that we went under with Nixon and with George Bush. What do you do when the president violates the law? Right. Well, Andrew Jackson said. Him. Andrew let's Jackson him. said about the Trail of Tears. John Marshall has made the law. Right. Let's see him enforce it. On with the march exactly. to Oklahoma. Exactly. Right. So I mean, you know that that's why. I mean, that's why you know, as a lawyer, I mean, the whole thing is. It's, I don't want to use the word fun lightly, but I mean, it's just interesting to read this and you shake your head and you say, well, okay, you know, now, 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 you know, an, an, a neutral party has agreed with what we knew, but yet that's not going to change practice. Um, and I mean, look at what's going on in Guantanamo. Those people are going to be there forever. You've got people down there who are never going to get out. Um, Obama tried, I think, to close Guantanamo, but the Congress is never going to give him the money to to do it. And so there, there it's going to sit. So 
I think we're in a, I think we're in a sorry state. Look, last was it yesterday or the day before? The New York Times reported about uh, all up into 2007 the illegal surveillance by the FBI into you know like Green Greenpeace and and you know PETA you know protection against cruelty to animals. Well, you we've been reading these stories for 10 years that that the FBI has been infiltrating activist groups that are nonviolent. And so there you have it again. And finally, the Inspector General, of the Justice Department, revealed that it is the case, and and that Mueller, FBI Director, lied to Congress when he said it wasn't going on. Now Mueller says, "Okay, I didn't know I was lying." But okay, so now so what, right? So what? You, they're still there. I'm sure they're still there. And Scott, let me let me just interject and say what I said when I wrote my book way back, which was way too. I mean, you know, not that I ever consider myself an optimist, but I know I didn't go far enough. But I made this point. Once a president, any president has seized powers that have hitherto been off limits. No other president is going to back off of that, because what president would not want all of that power? And Obama is the perfect example. He has not given up anything, just like the state secrets is a perfect example. The surveillance is a perfect example. Every president, and, and every time it you know it goes by without challenge, or or like like we just said, a president thumbs his nose at the law and says, "Screw you, come after me," right? Like Bush did and Cheney. Well, it becomes further entrenched, and you know what? It's never going to change. It's only going to get worse. And there's still the fear mongering continues today. Did you did you read about how um? Newt Gingrich is now saying that Sharia law has taken over the federal courts. Did you know that? Oh, Jesus. Are you kidding? Did you know that? You know, oh, I'm uh, not kidding you. Here's the look, thing look about the that guy, too. Post today. Look, I'm not kidding you. And he's on Fox News all night squealing it, that, sh- that, the federal, that the federal courts have been taken over by a cabal of Sharia, of Sharia lawyers and judges. Are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding. No, yeah. Well, he's everybody knows that the liberals are really extremely conservative right-wing Muslims. Elaine. Of course, right. Boy, well, I guess, and that just goes to show, right, that you can fool some of the people all of the time, and those are the ones you concentrate on, and that's all. I mean, nobody ever likes Newt Gingrich, but I guess he figures, uh, you know, if they don't know that he wrote the forward to the Toffler's work and stuff back then, and uh, they just get scared enough by what he says, then they'll well, somehow listen, give him power. Listen, Scott, the number, you need to go to the Washington Post today. Tell your readers to go to WashingtonPost.com today. Read two excellent articles, one by Eugene Robinson and one by Richard Cohen. Okay, both about uh, one's about Gingrich and one's about witchcraft. <laughs> witchcraft of the Republican Party. We won't go into that, but if you just go to WashingtonPost.com, and they are both on the uh, op- op-ed pages. Richard Cohen and Eugene Robinson must read both of those articles today, as as with every day that passes. More and more people believe that Obama is a Muslim, that Obama now, as, as Gingrich said, is what? Uh, he's channeling his father that he didn't know, and he's up to some, you know, voodoo African politics. Listen, Fox News. Hey, let's have a civil stuff. war, man. Everybody just grab your rifles and start killing right. each other. Everybody except right. the powerful people. What, what you need to do is find somebody weak to pick on and pick on them, and then you can feel like a big man. It's Republicans under a spell is the article she's talking right, yeah, about. Yeah. Here. It's, it's excellent, right? It's, it's really excellant. And then read the Eugene Robinson on um, on Gingrich. Hey, can right. I keep you ten more minutes here after the break, sure. Elaine? Great. I have so much more to talk to you about. Hang tight. Everybody, it's Elaine Castle. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime, 760-569-7753. That's 760-569-7753. All right, y'all. Welcome back to the show. 